welcome to Mermaid Bay Tarot. I'm uh, doing a video response to Fierce and Pretty's channel on YouTube and Astral Lady Tarot as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping you guys can hear me talk up a little bit. Um, welcome. Um, just thought I would reach out and kind of express myself a little bit. Um, on where we're feeling right now, like just in general, it seems like a lot of people are feeling lost, um, not just spiritually, just kind of in general. Um, I see many friends, um, having a hard time recently and, um, I see several YouTubers reaching out in the tarot community talking about, um, their spirituality and their loneliness and feeling really lost right now and not knowing, you know, where to go, where to ask questions, kind of, you know, general thing. Um, I feel like we've all been here, you know, we've all felt lost at some time. Um, I know I have, I think it's, I think it's a very common human experience. And it's something maybe we don't talk about often enough. You know, what we talk about what brings us together, we talk about the positive things, we talk about enlightenment and spirituality, and we look at other people sometimes and think, wow, they really have it all together. And I think we need to step back sometimes and just remember that, you know, Instagram and Facebook and even YouTube and uh, you know what people are putting out in the world granted we want to put out you know positive messages um, but that's just a snapshot or a glimpse in our life at that moment during the day and we're feeling something joyful and beautiful and we want to share it with others and hope that you know that uplifts somebody out there as well so I didn't want to go too far into depths of my personal experiences and um, just feeling really lost and lonely and um, you know I've been through some things uh, like a lot of people and I've been there I've been down in the, the dark depths and wondered what is this all for what is my purpose and you know I feel like I'm in a really good place and uh, I, I think something I've really come to realize the last couple of years working with the tarot again is the one thing that connects us all is love our love for each other our love about caring for each other and you know that is what connects us that's what brings us together as a community that's what builds community because we want connection we want to feel loved we want to express love and um, so someone pulled a card for me recently here's a little story and she pulled a dove, it was a spirit animal, and it basically was saying I should be embracing the energy of the dove. And I actually, before she pulled the card, I was like, you'll probably pull a bird because we live here by the ocean. We are surrounded by seagulls and all kinds of wild native birds. Uh, lots of doves in our yard. We have backyard chickens as well. And um, <laughs> I was sitting here this past week with my husband and I'm like what does it mean to embrace the dove energy you know and what does that mean for me in my life right now and he was giggling with me and I was looking it up and you know the dove is a messenger the dove is spiritual and they bring spirit messages to us and they're a, mes a sign and message of peace and love and unity and I mean it's so beautiful but I'm like okay how do I embrace this dove energy? You know, how do I be a little bit calmer on the days that I feel maybe a little bit anxious or a little bit overwhelmed or a little just, whoa, what's going, going on in the world? Um, because we don't watch the news too often and when we do, we're like, okay, yeah, that's why we don't watch the news. And, you know, try to get grounded and recentered back to our daily life. And um, I find that the things that ground me are our daily chores, you know, getting up, making coffee, feeding the animals, watering our garden and our plants, you know, 
taking time to do laundry. I do things a little bit slower here. You know, we do wash, we do have a washer and I do our laundry, but I do hang it on the line. And I find that that is quiet time for me. And, you know, it's something I did as a child with my grandma. And she talks about how the sun radiates and purifies the laundry. Like, you don't need fabric softeners. And I, I remember that as a kid, the smell, the beautiful smell of the sunshine on your laundry. And to me, it's intoxicating and calming and soothing because it reminds me of time with my grandma and it reminds me of the daily things that we did together growing up. And my grandma always put work first, did our chores and things like that, but then we always spent time in that day to laugh, to find something creative to do, whether it be like a craft or um, gardening or um, crochet. She taught me to crochet from a very young age and I love that she taught me these things because I find that that's what grounds me. And I know that might not be what grounds other people, you know, being in nature grounds me. And if that's something you want to try, that would be awesome. You know, I think, you know, but I think people need to find what, what ground, grounds them and center, centers them. And, you know, we can get overwhelmed with thoughts from ourselves and thoughts from the universe or thoughts about how, you know, when we pick up on other people's feelings, I know, I take that on sometimes and I find I need to like take up take up measures to kind of block other people's energy because it can be too much for myself and I can I can get consumed with what people are feeling so it's hard for me to get too close to people sometimes and but I also don't want to be you know so blocked off from people that I don't have that connection or friends you know and I think that was part of like starting my channel was I was really fearful I've lost a lot of friends in this process and am I gonna you know open myself up to haters whatever all this stuff like that am I gonna feel more lost by opening myself up and being vulnerable and all of that is a choice so like I feel like I feel like you know we open ourselves up but we can also do things to protect ourselves so that we know, you know, that's their, that's their bullshit, that's their crap, I don't need to take that on and not take it personally. And I think that comes from being an inner strength that we just need to work with and find. And I want to show you guys, getting back to the bird story, <laughs> Our, we came home yesterday and uh, my husband was mowing a, a yard and we pulled in, it was early evening, and he's like, Becca, there's a dove here. And I'm like, what do you mean there's a dove here? I'm like, we have, we have doves everywhere. What are you talking about? The doves come down, hang out with our dog, hang out with our chickens, you know, all the little finches and things like that. He's like, no, a little, a little baby dove fell out of the tree, out of our neighbor's tree under our driveway. Well, the heat was extremely, extremely hot yesterday, and our pavement was very hot, and I didn't want to touch this little bird. Because I'm hoping, you know, this little bird can go back to nature and fulfill its life purpose. And this little dove, um, I brought it some water and I brought it some, I've got some small uh, crumbles, chicken feed crumbles that I thought um, the little bird might want to eat. And so I brought it some water and, you know, put water around so it could cool off its feet and get something to drink. And he was just like, thank you so much. And then the little bird started hopping, hopping across our fence line, at our back gate where our dog is. And I was afraid the dog would eat this poor little dove. So we put the dog up in our uh, a pen that we have um, just in case, you know, whatever we have company, people are afraid of dogs or something like that. So we, we put her in a, a, we have a separate area for her to roam around in. And um, <laughs> so this little dove crosses our, our gate. He's hopping along. And he's hopping a little, he's following Waylon, my husband, and he's like, Becca, this bird needs your help. I'm like, what do you mean needs my help? What's going on? What is he doing? So I come out here, you know, to the back, and I'm like, what are you doing in my yard, little bird? And I was hoping, you know, maybe he'd find a spot on the grass or, you know, but he just kept looking up at me 
and hopping towards me and I'm like, what do you want? I don't, I'm not set up for emergency bird care. And I can't put this little bird with my chickens because they will hurt it and kill it because it's injured. And so I'm looking at this little bird and he seems to be walking and hopping along okay. He looks like he's flapping his wings okay, but he just maybe shook up from being, you know, fallen out of the tree and I'm hoping okay, you know, where, where am I going to put you? So I found a, a basket that we have um, from like our fruit king where we get fruit and things like that. So I have a couple of baskets and I put the basket there and he hopped into the basket. I've granted, I have not touched this bird. I don't want to pick him up or touch him or, you know, make it so that he can't go back to nature. But I'm like, where am I going to put him? So he hops in the basket and our porch is um, really a nice shady spot all day long. So, um, but we do have stray cats in the neighborhood and I'm like, the cats are going to get this poor little dove and I, it's too cold in our house. I don't want him to go into shock, um, to go from some extreme temperatures of a hundred something degree heat outside to, you know, even 70 degrees inside, the, the bird will die. So we put him on the porch and I put water there and I put some, some wet dog food there too. And I put another basket on top of him with a brick. So I checked on him this morning and he's doing well. And so we're going to see how he does. I, I have not picked him up. I haven't touched him. If anyone has any thoughts or ideas on helping the little bird, please put them in the comments below. I would love to know. Um, never cared for an injured bird like this. And he just would not stop looking up at me and asking for help. And my husband's like, you asked for dove energy and the universe manifested it for you. And I'm like, this is not what I meant when I was asking, what do I do with dove energy to add one more thing to my plate today <laughs> or the week or what we're doing. We have a lot that we have going on all the time. So, um, I did a spread about it this morning, just kind of asking in general, you know, what is it with this dove? that you want me to be working with or the dove energy, please don't send me any more little doves that fall out of trees. And I have this deck called the messenger cards, guidance from the animal spirits. Um, and it's a beautiful deck by, I think Sandra Coons. And I got the, granted this picked up on my feelings of what's going on in the world with everybody feeling stressed out or lonely or lost. It talked about the jaguar and the hummingbird with evolution. And then these, this popped up, Rise Above. That spirit is sending us messages to rise above what is around us and surrounding us. And how do we do that? This also popped up, Community. And the last one that popped out, and honestly all four, all four cards popped out this morning when I asked this question. This was Pearls of Wisdom. So I took out my tarot deck and I said, again, please clarify what is this dove energy that we need to be looking at. You know, and I got the Five of Pentacles in reverse. This is about struggle. This is about, you know, kind of being left out in the cold, cut off from sanctuary, from the church, from spirit, from, you know, the, in, in the upright, that's what it's about. So it's saying that we're not cut off from spirit, that we're not out in the cold, and that we're not alone. Again, another card popped out, and I got the lovers. The lovers with the angel of spirit, God, and the female and the male, male energy. To me, when I saw this, it reminded me even of the Three of Cups, of they're holding hands and community that, you know, spirit has our back, we're not alone, and all we need to do is reach out. And I see people reaching out, and it's okay to reach out when we feel alone and say, I'm, I feel alone, you know? Um, 
and just hang out with people and sit with them and, and chat or just embrace them and hug them. And another card popped out this morning and I got the Five of Swords. Our burdens are in our mind. But when we reach out for community, we're not left alone in the cold to deal with it. Um, so that's what I got this morning. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure where I'm going with this. <laughs> I think, you know, it's okay to not know everything. I don't believe that we are meant to know everything. It's all about the journey. It's The journey is about connecting with spirit, connecting with our family, our loved ones, our friends, and finding community so that we don't feel alone, left out in the cold. And I think that's been really challenging during the past two years for a lot of people, either in lockdown or wherever they are, they might not have anyone living with them, they might be alone in an apartment, and so it's really hard to reach out and be with people. And a lot of people, a lot more people are doing that online, they're reaching out online and trying to form connections and friendships. And I, I've tried to really organically do that on my Instagram. So if you're on my Instagram and follow me, I follow you and I watch your stories and I read about your stories and I try to comment and I feel like even though we don't sit and have coffee in the morning or once a week or things like that, I do feel like I'm a part of that community and that friendship and I connect to people on things that they're they're talking about or feeling or sharing and you know, if it touches me, I really do try to take two minutes out of my day to make a comment and let them know you know, I see you, I hear you, and, you know, sharing that joy or sharing that sadness or just, and that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to share in each other's joys and celebrations and sadnesses and, you know, the beautiful thing about tarot is it shows the journey of the fool and all the experiences that we go through as a human being. We're all human beings, and we all go through them at some point in our life. And it it's it talks about to me. It talks about the things that we need to hear, the things that we need to see, the things we need to maybe think about or learn to let go of. And it it's it's something that I came across over I don't know over twenty years ago. And I maybe didn't fully understand it then. And coming back to it now, I really... I, I'm, I'm understanding why they, they gifted me a tarot deck. Um, I'm understanding why they were teaching me guided meditations. And I felt really alone. Um, I felt really broken. I felt really lost. A long time ago. And even during during my life, there have been times where I felt that way. And, you know, it doesn't feel okay in the moment. It feels really shitty. <laughs> and I think what kept me going was my faith and my hope. Somehow, deep inside, I have a lot of hope. I've been through a lot of crap. <laughs> and I had a lot of hope still. Um, but there were days that I didn't have hope and how I got through that was just actually, and it, and the tarot talks about this is through the pentacles, through the pentacles ground us through physical work, physical work grounds us in the daily mundane things that we do, doing the dishes, getting up, getting dressed, getting washed, brushing our teeth. Those things, you know, and, and nurturing ourselves by drinking water and nourishing our body with good food 
and things like that and getting the rest that we need um so I wanted to take you guys on a little tour of this is what grounds me we were able to get a little home here by the ocean and I didn't know it then I've never I've never gardened before like personally on my own started a garden and planted things my husband has and he's taught me a lot of things along the way but I didn't realize that when I started this garden and there's a quote that I love from Audrey Hepburn to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow because it takes a really long time to grow stuff like five months sometimes from seed so you're waiting and hoping through the the rain and the drought and the heat and the winds and whatever else that's going on in nature um, that you will have some abundance in the end and something to nourish your body with and in the whole time that you're nurturing these plants you're nurturing yourself so I'm just gonna kind of take you guys me on a little bit of what I've created and here's the little bird he's in here so here's our little dove friend who has made a temporary home with us But what's happened in me creating a garden here, and especially during the pandemic, um, here's our herb kitchen garden. Many people have found us, not because of what we're growing. Sometimes, yes, sometimes they want to learn how to grow things. Some people come, they visit, they chat. I hang out on our front porch, but they come here in many cases because that they were sad or lonely and we created a space that was open and inviting and beautiful and our own sanctuary. And through that, we've created a community of friends. And shared sadness and shared joy. These are some of our fruit trees. They may not have a garden, or their garden may not look like ours, and that's okay. Everyone makes their own garden. No two gardens have to look the same. But some of what they found was just a sanctuary where they can meet friends, have plant swaps, connect. There's Kiara. There's our, one of our fig trees. It is not in the best shape right now. It is extremely hot here in South Texas. So the garden has some things growing in it that are doing well and some things are starting to not do as well with the high heat that we have. Here's our banana trees that create shade and things like that. But this is our space. This is what we've been working on. Um, a lot of the plants that we've gotten, we've gotten from friends. 
or seeds from friends that I've talked with online. This was another friend that sent me some seeds from online. There's a plant from a friend online. And I was working out in the garden this morning and it's very hot, it's dry, and we're going to have another high, high, hot day today. Heat index is going to be high hundreds plus, and in order for the plants to make it and survive through this kind of heat, a lot of these plants need to be deeply watered. And I'm sitting here watering my plants, wondering and thinking how that relates to the, the cups suit and how the cups of water are replenishing and they fill us up and they bring us joy, they sustain us. If we water too much, we can't take in all that water and it overflows and we don't get to feel that nourishment. And if we don't water deeply enough, the plants are struggling in the heat and they can't reach their roots down deep and get rooted and draw up the nutrients they need to stay healthy. So by watering deep, deeply, a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, you water for about three to five seconds, move to another area of water and let that soak in. Or we have the drip system with our rain water and it'll drip, drip, drip. And as we noticed, the drip irrigation waters more deeply than if we water it by hand. Just getting a little bit, drip, 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 a little bit, and a little bit more, and the plants thrive. So what are we doing in our lives to drip just a little bit of magic, of sparkle, of joy? I mean, this is what brings me joy is nature. Maybe what brings you joy is music. Maybe reading a good book, making a really good cup of coffee, a really good cup of tea. Find what nurtures you. Find what fills you up. Puppy was working on something yesterday. My garden is very dry right now. We are expecting some rain this week, so we're going to be getting some replenishment some nurturing, some love to fill up some of these things that need water in our sub-arid climate here. Here's one of our loofahs that are drying on the vine. Some more back here. Something else I've noticed in the garden. This was our spinach, um, Malabar spinach climbing, and I probably had uh, four plants on each, about eight Malabar spinach plants, and they climbed up over our arch. I had one loofah plant. These are my challenges as an urban gardener. One loofah plant took over my eight spinach plants, and now I have one loofah plant. And in front here, earlier in the season, we had cherry tomatoes. Um, they have since died out, and the loofah plant has taken over the space. So a lot of things I think about in the garden is what space a plant needs so it can thrive and grow. And I don't have enough space for every plant that I want to grow to thrive and grow. So I need to pick and choose the things that we put in our garden so that they can thrive and grow. And if I don't give each plant its space, it will get choked out. It will literally suffocate and not grow and thrive. So allow yourself space and time to be nurtured, to be filled up. 
because like the plants we too need to thrive we don't want to be in just survival mode we're not meant to just be in survival mode This is my spinach plant. It's not doing so well. One of my plants. Because it doesn't have the space to grow and thrive and be nourished like it was before. a little different um in front of our cheese in our backyard or that does love to coo in the morning. You can probably hear them now. Thanks for joining me this morning. We're not alone in this. And um, I just want to send love and light to those that are in the darkness or feeling lost or feeling like they don't know what to do. Do reach out. There are people that care and want to connect and just embrace you and embrace you where you are at and not tell you everything's going to be okay or that we need to know everything. That it's okay to feel what you're feeling and eventually small steps will get you out of feeling where you are at. Little things to fill up your cup each day. I'm sending you blessings, I'm sending you love and light.